In 2003, a great idea was born in Malta. This idea being the use of science as a bridge to peace in the Middle East and the world over. At first, there were only slender hopes of it surviving, yet it has thrived, grown and returns home again to Malta to celebrate the 10th anniversary of its inception. We are together all the time, uh, discussing, love each other, uh, help each other. Uh, we are cooperative and uh, feel a nice spirit. It's a wonderful spirit to feel that science is for science and not for a land. Bringing together scientists whose countries might be, um, you know, have some differences is quite amazing because in the activities, this is why Malta has known for bringing, being a bridge to peace by bringing these scientists who speak science um, on a common platform and a chance to meet and talk. Fully agree with science being limitless, borderless, countryless, genderless, just science. It's a really wonderful gathering that really proves that science unites us all. We are all talking one language, language of science, language of technology. We are all, you know, approaching the future. We are all preparing a better future for our young generations. And this is the common cause that helps us to, you know, we, we, uh, we overcome and we, we don't really forget, uh, remember any of the differences that we have, but we unite around science, around solutions, around a better future uh, for our young generation. I, th I think the, the conference is very important because you tend to participate in various uh, workshops uh, like nanotechnology, science education. Uh, uh, also, you tend to listen to Nobel laureates, and in each of the conferences in the past, you know, five conferences we had. Uh, almost six to eight uh, Nobel laureates with the great experiences, so we learn about their experiences, about their research work, about what they have done to the community and to the global community as a whole, as a researchers, and how they could benefit th this world. <laughs> In one case, it's a big success story when a student uh, came after a first degree and at the Weizmann Institute became a full-fledged uh, research student and now is a successful postdoc at Berkeley. Uh, and another one uh, came and is uh, in Canada. These are people that uh, came from a background where they were not exposed to research. The Weizmann is a high-powered research place and this is something that uh, we like to share with everyone in the world and it would be ridiculous not to, to exclude from that the people closest to us. And so for example nowadays we are very happy to have Hassan Dwight on a sabbatical with us. Now the next step is that we can go easily to Al Quds and to Bethlehem and Bill Zayt and but for that the politicians have to work a little bit harder. <laughs> yes. Also we have uh, some, uh, some project initiated uh, with, with the Malta conference and uh, you know it was a grant, a grant given to to work on how to purify water through TiO2, you know, and photovoltaics. I mean, it was a success, I think, and this has been initiated in Malta. <laughs> In here, we broke the borders and we are uh, very happy to see each other and to work together very friendly because what I say always, don't try to wait for an international agreement. Just go and make your action alone and don't sit to wait for somebody to come and rescue you in the street. So just go and make your own action because if we wait for an agreement, maybe we're going to lose a lot of time and lose a lot of generations.